Hello, everyone. Welcome to Friday night. <laughs> the end of the work week, as it were, for most of us. And during this time, as we have a sermon, this is a little bit of an unconventional situation here, recording a sermon on Friday night for Saturday morning service, but I encourage you to take a second and pause so that you can make sure that whatever you're holding on to from the week, whether it's any kind of stress or some kind of preoccupation in your mind, that you just relax and you let it go and you don't carry it with you anymore right now as we spend some time in worship and in the Word of God so that you can be at peace, so that you can find yourself truly open to however the Spirit may speak to you so that you're not holding on to something that's keeping you from getting a blessing. And with that said, I'm going to have a prayer and we'll get started. <clears throat> Lord, thank you so much for the Sabbath and for this time that we have now to spend some time in the Word of God and to be uplifted and to be encouraged by your promises. I pray that you would speak powerfully through me and that you would use me as an agent of peace tonight. Whoever's listening, Lord, whether or watching, whether it's live or whether it's later on after this has been recorded and posted online, I pray that you would touch their heart and their mind right now and that you would give them peace and that you would help them to just relinquish everything right now and find themselves open to your word, open to your voice, open to your leading. Give me clarity of thought and let every word that I say be chosen by you, please. I open myself up now to be your instrument and I ask that you would let nothing get in between you and me as I speak. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad that all of you are tuning in, whether it's live or later on on the recording. And tonight, I just want to take a few moments to talk about being bold in the chaos, because many of us right now are experiencing a lot of frustration, a lot of angst, a lot of unknown frustration, a lot of different emotions right now as we're going through this quarantine because it's difficult to not know what to expect. Human beings are creatures that like to know the end from the beginning and we don't like to leave things out of our scope of understanding because when we don't understand something, it makes us feel uncomfortable. It makes us feel like we're not in control and human beings like nothing more than to be in control of their circumstances because it gives us a feeling of satisfaction. It gives us a feeling of comfort, of peace of mind, even though we know deep down inside that life changes in a moment and things can be taken out of our control without even thinking about it. Not everything is up to us. We don't have the ability to control everything. We don't have the ability to dictate how everything in our day will go. And sometimes things take us by surprise. Sometimes things come our way that we didn't anticipate and we have to figure them out in the moment. We have to figure out how we're going to deal with them. I'll give you an example. This week, I've been feeling very connected with God. I've been feeling like he's been teaching me some powerful lessons. And last night, I couldn't sleep very well, so I was up very late and ended up deciding I was going to put my alarm for the last minute <laughs> before I had to go to work. And it was enough time. But unfortunately, the result was that I didn't get to spend the time with God in the morning that I thought I was still going to be able to because things never go according to plan. And so I rushed into work, and dur during the whole day, I'm not sure exactly why, but I felt like there was this strong negativity that was constantly trying to to beset me. It was like it was surrounding me throughout the whole day, and I was wrestling with it. And I was trying my best not to give into it so that I could stay positive, because we as Christians are called to be beacons of light and peace. And if we give in to negativity, then that dampens the influence that we can have. And you know what? It's like when you're hungry because you didn't eat since yesterday because you skipped breakfast and then your lunch doesn't happen when it's supposed to happen 
And what happens? You get really hungry. Maybe you get hangry. Some of us experience that sometimes. And what you're doing is you're trying to live today off of yesterday's energy, off of, off of yesterday's food, because you didn't take that time you needed to eat today. And what happens? Things that normally wouldn't frustrate you so much challenge you in ways that normally wouldn't be such a big deal. But because you didn't eat, they hit you harder because you're weaker, because you don't have the energy that you need. And I was feeling that a bit today, and I did my best to stay connected with God. I tried to continually you know, pray throughout the day and listen to uplifting stuff in my headphones. And it was good. It was helpful. But for the majority of the day, it was like I was constantly still surrounded. It didn't really go away, this, this sense of negativity, until later this afternoon. And then I got home and went up to my room. I changed, took everything out of my pockets, and took a moment to pause and read something in my Bible and read something from another spiritual book to ground myself again, to recenter myself, because I knew I needed it in general, but I also needed it for this sermon. I needed it for tonight, to, to go into the Sabbath with a spirit of openness to God and not carrying the burdens from my day. And you know what? It's funny how something so simple as being intentional about connecting with God like that can really make a difference in the way that you're thinking. And it really helped me feel like that sense of negativity that was around me throughout the whole day was just broken. It didn't have power over me anymore. And I'm telling you that because how much more important is it now when we are surrounded by all this uncertainty that we are spending that time with God? God has given us this time where we're not as occupied as we normally are so that we can rest, so that we can recharge. Because yes, this is a challenging time even though it's also a period of rest, but we know that other challenges will be coming our way in the future. So what are we doing now to prepare for those things? Are we truly using our time to the best, in the best way that we can to make sure that we're ready for the next thing to come? The enemy tailors his assaults to us based on the season of life that we're in. And right now, the common denominator for just about every person on the planet is that we're being careful to keep from getting sick. The enemy is surrounding us with negativity. He's trying to sap our souls of confidence peace, and joy. But guess what? We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be negative. We can be uplifted. We can be encouraged. We can be strong because Proverbs 28, 1 says, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Have you ever seen, I know most of you have, videos of lions in Africa? Man, they are unperturbed by any other animal just about. It's because they know that they're the top of the food chain. And the lion can be bold because it knows that it's strong. It knows that it really has almost nothing to fear because it is an apex predator. That's a cool technical word, for some, a technical term for some of you. I see Mr. Carter there, the science teacher. Apex predator is a term that he probably likes. Lions are apex predators. And see, God has made Christians through his power in us, to be like apex predators. We don't have anything to worry about. No matter what comes, to, comes our way, we can have peace because we know in whom we have believed. We know that it's not just up to us. There's a power that's in us that helps us to overcome all the odds. And speaking of that, I want to read Romans 8 with you. This is a passage that many of us think of, at least in the last part, but I want to read the whole chapter to you so that you can have it in context, because it's very important that we read Scripture in context. And this is going to show you how much more powerful, by reading the beginning of this chapter, you'll see how much more powerful the ending is. Romans 8 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death 
But to be spiritually minded is a life in peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness." But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, the, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 2 Timothy 1, verses 7 and 12 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Psalm 121 is a reminder of God's faithfulness to us, of why we can be bold like a lion 
not worrying about anything. What does it say? It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Psalm 91. See, many of us don't take enough time to find these promises, and then we wonder why we're having a hard time with so many things going sideways in our lives. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in, whom, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Isaiah 65, 24 says, I have this memorized yet. Lest I say any words incorrectly, I'll just read it. This is God speaking. He says, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. What does he say in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, though? He says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Are we putting God in a box? Are we limiting his power in our lives? What does he say in Jeremiah 29, 11? He says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Some people right now, probably actually many people, are struggling with thoughts of a future and a hope. They're starting to get desperate. Are we making sure that we're the light of peace that they need? Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Do you see here that he says that he'll listen to you? Some of us think that he's not listening right now. That's not true. He is listening. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with how much of your heart? All your heart. Are we seeking God with our whole heart, or are we allowing other things to get in the way because they seem more interesting or more important? Verse 14, at the beginning, he says, I will be found by you, says the Lord. This time of doubt, uncertainty, and anxiety is precisely the time for which the Lord has told us to be brave. We just read all those promises. You can't deny it. It's powerful. The world is dying for lack of comfort, direction, and faith in a better future. Hebrews 4.16 tells us, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'm not sure, actually, I'm quite confident that there's no other religion that, whose God desires us to come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy 
and find grace again to help in time of need. These other religions make us depend on our own works, but not Christianity, not God, not the God of the Bible. Now, I wrote this here, and I want to read it so I don't get it wrong. Now, listen carefully what I'm going to say, to what I'm going to say here. I think you'll find it powerful. Based on the promises that we've just read together, now is the time to boldly search the Scriptures for the promises of God's providence and care for us. Now is the time to confidently step forward in faith and continue to believe that God will provide for our every need. Now is the time to choose faith over fear, knowing that God has been true to us in the past and has given us no reason to doubt He will continue to be faithful. Now is the time to be resolute, dauntless, and persevering no matter what the enemy attacks us with because He has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now is the time to be intrepid with our faces set like a flint, choosing to weather the storm no matter how hard and cold the winds blow and no matter how dark the clouds make the night. Now is the time to choose holiness over compromise because we know deep down that we're tired of lukewarm commitment to Christ and are finally ready to see his power fully unleashed upon our world. Now is the time to choose to cultivate the fruits of the Spirit instead of those of the flesh, renouncing the world and upholding Christ in everything we do. Now is the time to let go of the habits and thoughts that hold us back from believing God is capable of greater things than we, can li- than we limit Him to, so we can see miracles before our eyes and His promises fulfilled. Now is the time to lift one another up in prayer and on the phone, banding together in unity so that Christ's church can be the light the world is longing to see. Now is the time to put God to the test in our finances and see if he will really bless us if we pay our tithes and offerings, despite things being tight right now. Now is the time to look forward to the second coming with eager expectation, knowing that our salvation is now nearer than when we first believed. And now is the time to simplify our lives and become focused on what matters the most. Now is the time to regulate the way we feel with the scriptures, rebuking thoughts and feelings that deceive us into feeling God has higher priorities than drawing us closer to him because we know our hearts are deceitful. Now is the time to use the time we have left on this earth to glorify Christ in every thought, every word, every action, and every moment because we know we have been redeemed. I like that one. Now is the time to recognize that this is the time And any excuse to delay action is not founded in wisdom, but in selfish ambition and deceit. Now is the time to remember that we are children of the light and that our lives have meaning. Now is the time to take on the responsibility of shouldering one another's burdens and find purpose in edifying each other. Now is the time to choose discipline when we lack motivation because we know we need to grow no matter how badly we feel. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2 says, For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Lest anything be holding you back, listen to Christ's words in Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30. He says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Therefore, I invite all of you to take God at his word and embrace the comfort of knowing that we can be bold in the chaos of life because he is with us. And I'll close with this scripture, Jude 24 and 25. It's only one chapter, so you just say the verses when you reference it. This is my benediction for you. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. David.
Greetings to all who are watching in these parts of the world. And we'll be seeing this on uh, recordings. Uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that tonight began the It Is Written, um, Hope Awakens. So if you missed it tonight or part of it, you can watch it again on YouTube because they're going to post it. Also, well, for those of you who don't know about Hope Awakens, the, uh, the series that started tonight, it's a wonderful series where John Bradshaw is going to be showing us how Bible prophecy ties into what's happening today with all this coronavirus business and how God, as David has said, says, uh, when you see all these things coming and happening, lift up your head, lift up your eyes, look up, because redemption draws nigh. So I encourage everyone to watch Hope Awakens on either YouTube or on the It Is Written on TV site, or go to hopeawakens.com and register, and there'll be a lot of instructions. So whenever you have a project this huge, there are bound to be some hiccups, and we had some hiccups tonight, but God will bless. You know, the devil doesn't want people to know about this, and, and uh, he doesn't want anybody to know about this, so he does his best to crash the internet wherever. It's gonna be a series of about uh, 20 uh, lectures. Um, again, they'll be broadcast live at 7 p.m. EST. They're broadcasting out of Tennessee. So whatever that is in relation to where you are in the world, you may be uh, six hours ahead or five hours behind, or if you're on the other side of the international dateline, a day on the other side. So, but it's uh, Hope Awakens, um, 7 o'clock. Also, I want to remind you to uh, follow David on his podcast, Edification Station Podcast, Edification Station Podcast, on anchor.fm or on Spotify. You can follow me there. What's that? So, anyway, I'm getting uh, feedback from my audience here. <laughs> so, take care, guys. Have a happy Sabbath, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you.